Hi, I'm Varun, the founder and CEO at Hammer Missions, and in this video, I'm going to try and explain a very important and key concept if you're trying to create 3D models for sites with different buildings or structures on it. So one of the things that we see quite often is when we see our customers process uh, 3D models using Hammer Missions, is that they capture a lot of different images of a site uh, which has buildings on it, and they process it with Hammer Missions. And in the, in the output model, what they see is, is that the top of the, of the model has come out really well, but even if they collected a lot of facade images and a lot of images on the sides of the buildings, it doesn't look as, as impressive as they thought. And we've seen this happen quite a few times. And the reason for why this happens is not because the software is doing anything wrong, uh, it's because the images have been collected in a certain way that makes it almost impossible for the software to create really good results of the facades as well. So if you're trying to create a 3D model of a site with different buildings on it, or even if it's just one building, what you need is not just images, not just random images of the roof and the facade disconnected from each other, um, what you really need is essentially a group of images that overlap with each other both on the roof as well as on the facade and also amongst each other. So to be able to do this you can actually use um, something called oblique images. So typically when a drone is taking images it's taking images at a negative 90 degree angle from so essentially looking from the top to the bottom. These are called nadir images. However, you can also combine the nadir images with oblique images. Oblique images essentially come in two different types. You've got the high oblique images and you've also got the low oblique images. If you combine nadir images with high oblique images and low oblique images and also your facade images all in one project and make sure that at least the nadir, high oblique and low oblique images overlap with each other, you can end up with a really high quality model of the site. And what's really important is that you can get this by getting images that are actually at a distance from the building. So you don't have to be really up and close to the building. Um, so I think this is one of the things that we feel a lot of people get wrong. And so I'm making this video so that I just put this information out there so people understand that very much it's about capturing data in the right place with high quality. And once you do that, you can get really high quality results. And in fact, you know, once you start doing it and you do it with every single project, it becomes second nature to you. So every single project you do, you will do it with that particular framework in mind and you'll get really high quality results. So in short, make sure you've got your nadir images, high oblique images and low oblique images all together in one project. Uh, make sure you're not too close to the building, that you have enough sufficient distance to the building so you capture the entire building. And if you want, you can combine all of these three sets of images with your up and close facade images in one project, uh, but only process the, the, the first three data sets, not the facade data set. Um, if you're curious how to do that and what's the workflow in Hammer Missions or any other software that you're using, I'm happy to share some links uh, in this video description. Um, hopefully it was useful to understand this key concept. Um, and uh, if you're looking to learn more about why you need high oblique images and low oblique images and how does photogrammetry work in general, uh, please feel free to check out another video I've made on photogrammetry and how it works and how it's important for all the features to match up with each other so that you can get a nice depth, uh, dense point cloud uh, representation of the site, which is um, sort of a technical way of saying a 3D model uh, of the site which is estimated from the images. So anyway, hopefully this was useful. Uh, if you have any comments on some of the things that you found that make your 3D models really better, whether it's um, exposure levels or overlaps or anything else, please do leave them in the comment section for anybody else that finds this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do subscribe to our channel and hopefully we see you as a part of our community.